Hello everyone in Cardio Mind channel and welcome to the seventh video in the guidelines of acute coronary syndromes and today we are having an interesting and brief discussion regarding Minoka versus type 2 MI. Let's start with Minoka which means myocardial infarction with non-obstructive coronary arteries. What do we mean by this terminology? It refers to a clinical situation in which the patient presents with symptoms suggestive of acute coronary syndrome and when we measure serum troponin there is a detectable rise or fall so this diagnosis MI but when we undergo coronary angiography there is non-obstructive coronary arteries this means that the patient has dormant coronaries or coronary artery stenosis less than 50% in any major epicardial vessel so here Minoka is a working diagnosis not a final diagnosis as here we have a dilemma that the patient is having symptoms troponin elevation but no evidence of obstructive coronary artery disease that we see in the majority of cases so we need further investigations to reach the final diagnosis the reported prevalence of Minoka is variable across studies but it ranges between 1 to 14 percent in those with acute coronary syndrome undergoing angiography and compared with patients with obstructive coronary artery disease those patients with Minoka are more likely to be younger in age females rather than males and less likely to have diabetes hypertension and dyslipidemia what do we conclude from this this suggests a predominant role of non-atherosclerotic etiologies in patients with Minoka and less prominent role of recognized cardiovascular risk factors so the pathology and the mechanism in Minoka is completely different from this in patients with MI and obstructive coronary artery disease regarding the etiologies there are variable causes for Minoka we can divide them into coronary pathologies and non-coronary pathologies and those non-coronary are further divided into cardiac disorders or non-cardiac disorders let's give some examples for the coronary causes coronary embolism which is most likely distal embolization so we cannot see it in the coronary angiography or coronary microvascular dysfunction spasm non-occlusive thrombus so the stenosis is less than 50% myocardial bridging plaque rupture or erosion or a dissection flap due to spontaneous coronary artery dissection in all these cases you use a coronary angiography as a stenosis of less than 50% but actually there is a coronary pathology or non-coronary but still cardiac causes like cardiac trauma cardiomyopathies cardiotoxins like chemotherapy myocarditis strenuous exercise takotsubo cardiomyopathy a famous cause of minoka and transplant rejection then there are some non-cardiac cause outside the cardiovascular system like the acute respiratory distress syndrome in case of pneumonia allergy end stage renal disease inflammatory disease pulmonary embolism sepsis or stroke this table shows the typical clinical presentation of patients with Minoka regarding their symptoms and we cannot hear that they are nearly the same as those with obstructive coronary artery disease so the clinical presentation is the same what about the prognosis the reported mortality may be less than those with obstructive coronary artery disease but still it is not low contemporary study of Minoka patients reported 12 months old cause mortality of 4.7 this is not a low percentage and the recurrence rate is nearly the same as about 25% of those with Minoka will experience angina in the subsequent 12 months and this is similar to the frequency reported in those with MI and obstructive coronary artery disease that's why we should not underestimate the prognosis of Minoka regarding mortality and regarding the recurrence rate so what is our aim when we deal with a working diagnosis of Minoka to establish the underlying cause of Minoka and so we can reach a final diagnosis and then manage the patient appropriately according to the specific cause reached and failure to identify the underlying cause of Minoka may result in inadequate or inappropriate therapy that's why we need to do our best in order to reach the specific cause and so the final 
diagnosis because there is no unified treatment for all cases of Minoka. So what is the workup? First of all, we need to undergo invasive coronary angiography. It is one of the three criteria to define Minoka. So this is a recommended test to identify coronary anatomy. In some cases, we can administer vasoactive medication intracoronaries like trinitrate or verapamil to exclude coronary spasm. And it can diagnose as well spontaneous coronary artery dissection and the myocardial bridge. So this is the basic investigation for all patients with Minoka. But is the coronary angiography enough to reach the final diagnosis? Unfortunately, no. We need further investigations, for example, left ventriculography. It can assess the segmental motion abnormality to confirm a final diagnosis of MI or another specific cause like for example Takatsupo cardiomyopathy in which there is akinesia of all the apical segments but not respecting a vascular territory so resulting in apical ballooning or measuring the LV and diastolic pressure if it is more than 12 mm mercury this suggests impairment of the LV systolic and or diastolic function we can also use the intravascular imaging like IVUS or OCT. It can help to detect unrecognized causes during coronary angiography, for example, small non-occlusive thrombus, black rupture, erosion, or a small dissection flap in case of spontaneous coronary artery dissection. All these pathologies may not be visible in the coronary angiography. Moreover, it can provide information on the plaque composition, burden, and if there is any outward Remodeling. This can help to clarify ambiguous coronary lesion to diagnose significant atherosclerotic coronary artery disease. The functional assessment of coronaries is mandatory in cases of a working diagnosis of Minoka as it can help to measure the microvascular function and the coronary reactivity. Plus, it can use intracoronary acetylcholine or ergonovine in order to diagnose coronary or microvascular spasm. So the functional assessment is essential in these cases, and this drags us to a famous terminology of functional coronary angiography, which includes the coronary angiography that gives us data on the coronary anatomy and adjunct test like assessment of coronary microvascular dysfunction or vasoreactivity. So we don't use only coronary angiography. No, the functional coronary angiography concept helps to reach the final diagnosis of Minoka. Don't forget the non-invasive imaging in cases of Minoka. For example, the echo is a basic imaging to assess the LV function, the resting segmental motion abnormality, and exclude alternative diagnoses like, for example, cardiomyopathies or myocarditis. And CMR is essential as it can identify the underlying cause in 87% of patients with a working diagnosis of Minoka and it should be performed as soon as possible, mostly during hospital admission, to reach the specific cause of Minoka and so reach the final diagnosis. Also to exclude coronary anomalies as it may explain the typical presentation of acute coronary syndrome with rise in the serum troponin and sometimes it may help to detect aortic dissection or pulmonary causes as we combine CT coronaries with CT autography and CT pulmonary angiography. Of course, this patient is going to have blood tests during his hospital admission, for example, full plaque count to identify the hemoglobin level, serum troponins which can diagnose MI, kidney function and serum electrolytes important for the follow-up and the prognosis, CRP is usually elevated in patients with MI, but if there is marked elevation in CRP, it may suggest an inflammatory disease, malignancy, or sepsis. So we may need procalcitonin to exclude sepsis and D-dimer, which is elevated in MI, beside pulmonary embolism. And if there is suspicion for LV dysfunction, we can measure BMP or NT-pro-PMP. So after this workup, what is recommended treatment? Appropriate treatment is initiated based on the final diagnosis. So you reach the cause, so treat the cause. So there is no universal treatment for Minoka. Besides secondary prevention therapies for those with evidence of coronary atherosclerosis and to control the conventional risk factors which promote atherosclerosis. So treatment of Minoka is treatment of the cause.
This diagnostic algorithm summarizes how to deal with a working diagnosis of MINOCA, starting with the clinical history, physical examination, and ECG assessment, beside inside the CAST lab, the detailed angiographic assessment plus minus left ventriculography, intravascular imaging like IVAS or OCT, and assessment for coronary microvascular dysfunction and vas reactivity. Then there are other assessments like, for example, ECG assessment for the serial ECG, echocardiography, CMR, which is an essential test, blood test, and also CT belvi abdomen or CT brain, as in some cases, extensive stroke or intracranial hemorrhage may be responsible for dynamic ECG changes and or rise in serum troponin. Then the final step is for post-discharge care regarding follow-up clinic evaluation, repeating echo or CMR according to the initial results, and don't forget that those patients need to be involved in a cardiac rehabilitation program due to the risk of recurrence of the angina symptoms. So the specific recommendations for Minoka that all patients need CMR imaging after invasive angiography if the final diagnosis is not clear and we need to manage Minoka according to the final established underlying diagnosis as there is no universal treatment and in all patients with a working diagnosis of Minoka, it is recommended to follow a diagnostic algorithm that we discussed shortly to determine the underlying final diagnosis. And by the way, there is another expression that may be confusing with Minoka, which is ischemia with non-obstructive coronary artery, sometimes abbreviated as Inoka. This disease is an equivalent term but described in the context of chronic coronary syndrome. So it is not a myocardial infarction, not a patient with acute coronary syndrome, just there is the evidence of ischemia in chronic coronary syndrome, but no obstructive coronary arteries. So don't be confused between Minoka and Inoka. Now moving to type 2 MI, what do we mean by this terminology and how it is different from Minoka? We define type 2 MI as an ischemic myocardial injury caused by mismatch between oxygen supply and oxygen demand. So the oxygen supply to the myocardial muscle fibers is not enough to meet their demand. And so the pathology here is not related to acute coronary atherosthrombosis. It is due to supply demand mismatch. This may occur in the context of an underlying atherosclerosis, but there is on top oxygen supply demand mismatch or mismatch alone in a patient with normal coronaries, sometimes the secondary to coronary vasospasm, secondary to coronary microvascular dysfunction, and secondary to non-atherosclerotic coronary dissection. But all these pathology have something common which is the occurrence of oxygen supply demand mismatch. There is a wide range of causes for type 2 MI. Sometimes there are coronary mechanisms, for example, coronary embolus, coronary dissection, spasm, or microvascular dysfunction, slightly similar to some of the pathologies in Minoka, and non-coronary mechanisms which are more famous, like severe hypoxia, for example, in case of pneumonia, hypotension resulting in coronary hypoperfusion and also supply-demand mismatch, anemia, which is a famous cause for type 2, MI regardless the cause of anemia if due to blood loss or iron deficiency anemia. Tachycardia and bradycardia in extremes heart rate may result in coronary hypoperfusion resulting in type 2 MI. All these pathology have something in common which is supply demand mismatch. We can notice here that some patients with type 2 MI can be considered as having Minoka as they are having clinical symptoms of acute coronary syndrome with troponin rise and in coronary angiography. If it was done, it shows non-obstructive coronary arteries. But the peculiar to consider type 2 MI is the presence of supply and demand mismatch as the pathology responsible for the ischemic myocardial injury. As regards the prognosis, type 2 MI is very common as we see that the non-coronary mechanisms responsible for type 2 MI are very common to occur in the clinical practice like hypoxia, hypotension or anemia. And it has the same prognosis as type 1 MI which is caused by coronary 
atherothrombosis. Despite some common risk factors between type 1 and type 2, the pathophysiology of type 2 is completely different as here it is supply demand mismatch, while in type 1 it is coronary atherothrombosis and the treatment so is different in type 2 MI which focus on treatment of the cause from type 1 MI which focus on urgent revascularization. I want just to clarify the difference between myocardial injury and myocardial infarction. Myocardial injury is characterized by myocyte necrosis and troponin elevation due to mechanisms other than myocardial ischemia. It can be acute myocardial injury with detectable rise or fall of serum troponins like in cases of sepsis, myocarditis or Takotsubo cardiomyopathy or chronic myocardial injury with static serum troponin like in cases of heart failure, cardiomyopathies or severe valvular heart disease. If there is no evidence of ischemia like symptoms, dynamic ECG changes or evidence of segmental motion abnormality so it is considered just myocardial injury as in this case there is no evidence to define it as myocardial infarction. However, the diagnosis may change if subsequent investigations show an evidence of ischemia to meet the criteria of MI according to the 4C universal definition of myocardial infarction. So what is the treatment for type 2 MI? Of course the same idea as in Minoka, treatment of the precipitating cause. We need targeted echo of course to assess the LV function in this case. Plus minus we may need coronary angiography either invasive or CT coronaries to identify if there are contributory cardiac condition in order to guide the long term treatment. But not in all cases because if there is an evidence of a frank cause of supply and demand mismatch like severe hypotension or severe anemia, so coronary angiography may not be essential, unlike in Minoka, which is one of the criteria to undergo coronary angiography. Please note that there is no specific recommended pharmacological treatment for patients with type 2 MI. Why? Due to lack of robust scientific evidence investigating all the management strategies besides the wide range of precipitating causes for type 2 MI. So there is no universal treatment, just treat the cause. That's why the treatment of type 2 MI is focusing on identifying and treating the precipitating conditions like anemia, hypoxia or hypotension and tract control of cardiovascular risk factors. So we have reached the end of our video today. So Minoka and type 2 MI have something in common that they have a broad range of etiologies either cardiac or non-cardiac, coronary or non-coronary and we need further investigations in post condition to reach the cause as the treatment here focus on treatment of the cause. But Minoka is different that coronary angiography is essential not just the anatomical coronary angiography, the functional coronary angiography that assess the microvascular dysfunction and vasory activity plus cardiac imaging, echo and CMR is essential. So we extend beyond the invasive coronary angiography to reach the culprit pathology and so treat the cause. There is nothing called this patient is diagnosed with Minoka. Full stop. We need to reach the specific cause. And regarding type 2 MI, the workup is slightly different. That we focus here on the echo, on the laboratory workup to determine the cause of supply demand mismatch, plus minus coronary angiography. It may be needed, it may be not according to the detected cause. And so if we reach the cause of oxygen supply demand mismatch, we can treat it in order to abolish the risk of type 2 MI because there is nothing called this patient has just type 2 MI. We need to reach the specific cause. Thank you very much for watching this video and you are meeting next week in another video in the guidelines of acute coronary syndromes.